right. Hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And you know, one of my goals is to open up as many bottles of wine as I can every year. And we like to share them with you, our wine drinking people. So the reason I put on these tastings in the store here, these walk around events where you open up like 30 different wines, is to taste the wines myself. And I always try to take notes on as many wines as I can before the event takes place. And if we had the samples here, I had notes on all of the wines last night, I think 24 wines in total. I'm not going to bore you with all the notes going through them verbally here. I'm just going to hit the highlights for you at our Southern Rhone tasting. And, you know, Southern Rhone is all about Grenache, Syrah, Carignan, uh, and then Viognier. We had some wonderful Viogniers, which uh, I usually don't think of when I think of the Southern Rhone because Condru is located in the Northern Rhone and Chateau Grier, which Grier is its appellation unto itself. Those are 100% Viognier-based wines. They do use a little Viognier and Cote Roti to co-ferment, but uh, the, uh, um, the, the, the Cote de Rhone here from Vidal, uh, Fleury, 100% Viognier, Cote de Rhone Blanc. So usually those wines are a blend, but Cote de Rhone is a general kind of appellation. The wines could come from anywhere, the north or the south in the Rhone Valley. So some pretty unique and interesting stuff at this event. And uh, we had 2010, we had 2009, two great vintages. I'm edging my opinion toward the 2010s. To me, they're a little more classic. They have a little more concentration and depth. The 2009s, not a flash in the pan, certainly, but uh, lovely forward fruit. Maybe just not the structure to last as long as 2010. And the Southern Rhone has had a slew of great vintages, 2005, 2007, the greatest vintage ever. And then 2009 came, and then 2010. And the 2011s that I've had, had this lovely precociousness to them, this lovely forward fruit and a lovely floral quality. They may not have the structure of these 2010s, but these are wines that you can drink while you're waiting for your 2010s to mature in your cellar. Well, we started out with a little Pesqui Terraces Blanc, which just wants a blend of Viognier, Roussan, and Clarets. And this one was lovely. I mean, for the price, a lovely honeysuckle floral note coming out to the apricot and white peach notes, some white pepper spice. Really lovely balance in this wine. You know, Viognier sometimes can be a little oily, a little alcoholic, a little over the top. But this wine had a lovely freshness to the finish. Some white pepper spice and the floral and honeysuckle notes coming through at the end. Uh, excellent bottle of uh, white from... Uh, the Cote de Ventoux, the, uh, well, an area just south of the Cote de Rhone, but we had some things from further south from the Languedoc thrown in this tasting. And, of course, one person brought a wine from the Northern Rhone, a Cote Roti, and, you know, hey, if you said, do you want me to open it? I said, of course, you have it here. And several people brought some extra wine, so if you don't see your wine on here and you're one of the suppliers, that's because you didn't have the information to us in time. And Well, you know, I mean, if it was here also, we would have reviewed it, but unfortunately if you brought it with you, uh, by the time the tasting started, I didn't have time to, you know, go through all the wines. One of my favorite wines is Domaine de Garrigue 2010, La Chanterelle, a blend of Grenache, uh, 80%, 20% Syrah, 80-plus-year-old vines. This wine, uh, Vacaras, really lovely roasted character to the red cherry and plum-like fruit, fine herbs and dried meat notes as well. Lovely berry fruit. That's what uh, Vacaras Gigondas Chetneuf is all about, this lovely fresh berry pie, I like to say, uh, fruit on the tongue. And that meaty character showing through on the finish, some ripe round tannins and lovely freshness at the end. These 2010s, excellent structure, some herb and uh, earthy characters as well, the Chanterelle. The 2011 St. Cosme Cote de Rhone. Wow, a little blockbuster. You know, this is one of the first 2011s I've had. Lovely black pepper spice to the blackberry uh, fruit here. Some meaty notes, raw steak, and the lovely floral quality of this wine. Just big and voluptuous on the tongue. A nice amount of that blackberry fruit. Pretty floral notes. Lovely perfume and spice in this one. Just a succulent wine. Just ready to drink right out of the bottle. The St. Cosme Chet Nif to Pop. Also excellent. This wine had lovely duck, dark plum and dark cherry fruit on the nose. Some dried meat, kind of sausagey notes, sweet herbs. I like toffee kind of spice to the nose also. Really exotic, very forward and enticing. Lovely amount of ripe, delicious berry pie fruit. Like I said, these 2009s, uh, just really succulent and delicious right now. Some black pepper spice, a good amount of that garrigue and herbal note, herbal floral note showing through on the finish. Excellent. All right, the Delas Cote de Rona Spirit. This wine is always a great little value. For around $10, it is hard to beat the value you get out of Cote de Rhone's. This one had a lovely fresh floral nuance to the red cherry and plum-like fruit. Really forward and appealing red licorice spice there even. Lovely freshness on the palate. Light, but it had a lot of nuance to this wine. Just a really pretty wine. Smooth, round tannins. Lots of mass appeal in this wine. The uh, Chet Nif de Pop was also excellent. Uh, the Chapoutier, Le Bernardine. Uh, outstanding. And then uh, the Cote Roti from Delos, even though it's not from the Southern Rhone, was very good. 
Um, the Banyuls was the wine that surprised a lot of people. A lot of people didn't realize they make dessert wine here. And this one had a lovely cherry liqueur-like fruit on the nose, hints of brown spice, kind of mocha, and a really lovely density and richness in this wine, a wine that goes excellent with chocolate. Okay, we got Valentine's coming up. Not a bad thing to have, a wine that goes excellent with chocolate around Valentine's. A lovely freshness on the finish, even though this wine did have really nice richness. The Vidal Fleury wines, really a surprise. You know, the Cote de Rome Blanc, 100% Viognier, lovely, pretty apricot, white peach-like fruits, hints of white flowers, some wet stone, really fresh on the tongue. Viognier can be a little heavy. This wine, not heavy at all. Really lovely balance. Some white flour, white pepper uh, spice showing on the finish. Really good bottle of wine. Uh, the uh, Vidal Fleury Cote de Rome Rouge, also very good, really bright red berry fruit on the nose, hints of raw meat and floral notes, a really lovely fresh style of Pinot uh, of, of a Cote de Rhone, which I love about these 2010s, their freshness, that garrigue floral and herbal notice notes also coming through on the finish, very good. And, uh, well, we had a couple extra wines here, the Gives Coloran uh, Viognier Vin de Pays, which is a Neil Rosenthal wine. I didn't know all of Neil's wines are all estate bottle. He doesn't touch anything that's purchased fruit. He wants to make sure the producers have, see the thing from start to finish. And this one had a lovely fresh pear, white apricot fruit, some pretty floral notes, lychee nuts, really pretty bouquet, some white pepper spice showing, a really lovely balance on the palate. Again, a really fresh style of Viognier, and uh, that, that uh, floral, that pepper spice showing at the end, really nice. The Tiradal Avion Cote de Rhone, excellent bottle of wine. We've had this wine in the store for over a year. This 2009, I can't believe it's still available. A uh, blend of mostly Grenache, Syrah, Sinso, and Carignan. Really rich and well endowed on the palate. Lovely smooth and round, ripe tannins. And uh, drinking really nice floral notes. And it's, uh, it's nice complexity for such an, an entry-level wine. This one really over-delivers for the money. The Cypress also. This wine is made by Louis Viral from St. Cosme. And uh, 80-20 Grenache Syrah blend. Uh, this family has, uh, he's got large holdings, and this is a cuvee that's made for Kermit Lynch. Uh, less, nice amount of dried herbs in this wine, some dark plum notes, a little meaty, sausagey notes also. Rich and uh, well endowed on the tongue here for an entry level Cote de Rhone, some dark spices, soy notes. Really nice structure here, very good little wine, an excellent value. Um, like I said, Cote de Rhone just really over delivers. The Domaine de Durban, Baume de Venise Rouge, also an excellent wine. This wine's a blend of 75% Grenache, 20% for all. Uh, Syrah, 5% Movedra, really big and fruity wine. Uh, they use a little carbonic maceration in this. You get a little bit of that bubble gum kind of quality, but uh, really rich and densely packed on the palate. It's a dark berry fruit, cocoa, sweet herbs, a little violet and floral notes, some black pepper spice, an excellent bottle of wine. As were the Gramanon wines, the L'Elementaire, 100% Grenache, and the Syrah de Sud, 100% Syrah, and the 2011 Syrah de Sud. Man, you had this lovely kind of floral notes, uh, and black pepper spice showing on the nose, really kind of wild component to this wine, also wild herbs and flowers, and that peppery spice showing up on the finish. And then, uh, you know, this uh, Cote Hussan Chetin of the Pop I never heard of before, another really nice little wine from Florida Wine Company, 35 to 45 year old wines from the Las Samades parcel, 95% uh, Grenache, 5% Cinso, this wine had a lovely dark cherry and plum fruit on the nose, a host of spices and pretty floral notes, sweet herbs, mocha, really nice complexity, forward round, and uh, drinking beautifully right now, a hallmark of this 09 vintage, but has enough structure and depth to last for a decade or more in your cellar. The Jean-Luc Colombo wines are in the house, both the Abilese wines, the Rouge and the Blanc, excellent values, a more savory style though, not as big and fruity as some of the other wines, the Jean-Luc Colombo uh, Chetin of the Pop also showing excellent, excellent, this 2009 vintage, like I said, just all about immediate gratification. All right, well, that's what I had to drink, or most of what I had to drink at our Southern Rhone tasting. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.